Today we're going to be testing out a new coding agent that came out from China and I see very positive reviews on the internet in the past week. So today we're going to test out Minimax M2.1, which is significantly enhanced for programming through multiple languages. This is a quite new release, just got released like 10 days ago, and it's straight from China. So this model is especially good for web development, app development, and multi-programming language capabilities. So it no longer is confined within Python alone, but it's also able to write Java, C++, and a lot of other languages. So as we can see here, we can see a little bit of a benchmarks compared to other kinds of models. And there are a lot of positive reviews from a lot of developers of AI and companies, which is really, really interesting. Of course, we're going to actually test it out today together, but before we do so, we're going to check some benchmarks. So here we can see it compared to Claude Sonnet 4.5, Gemini 3 Pro, GPT 5.2 Thinking, and DeepSeek version 3.2. We can see that this model is able to do a very good job on multiple agentic encoding benchmarks. Especially on the multilingual part, it's the best one out of all of these. Now, this is not the only important thing. It beats those models in multiple other benchmarks, which is pretty amazing to see. Additionally, Minimax offers a coding plan that is super, super cheap. Literally $2 per month as a beginning price and from the second month $10 per month, but you get 100 prompts with Minimax M2.1 every five hours. This is very generous limits at a very low price. And also, if you go with a yearly subscription, you could get heavy discounts that are super amazing. Even their plus plan, which is like $20 per month, is super amazing with 300 prompts every five hours. And someone would say, is this just for the chat model? No, this is easily integrated inside Cloud Code, Cursor, Try ID, pretty much any ID or CLI you could think of which is pretty, pretty amazing. Like you get a very amazing model for a very cheap subscription for a lot of prompts every five hours, like 300 prompts. Good luck spending that in a single, you know, session of five hours. This is pretty amazing. And their max version also is super, super insane. So before we begin with the testing, I'm just going to show you some benchmarks really quick. If you're not interested for that, you can skip ahead to see my own checks or close the video and get started running it and testing it out. So as we can see on the benchmarks, it does a tremendously good job against models that are a lot more costly than it. It also is beating GLM 4.6 and also 4.7, which we covered on the previous video, on multiple benchmarks by quite a mile. So this is a very capable Chinese model and I find this super amazing. Like the results are super, super great. Of course, it's not as good as Cloud 4.5 Opus or Gemini 3 Pro in general, but it is a lot cheaper. And we can see here on multiple benchmarks, the quality of it seems amazing. So of course, benchmarks mean nothing. We really need to test these models out on the real world. And here we see a comparison with Opus. So Opus is like the number one here, but Minimax M2.1 comes really, really close. Also on open router, Minimax M2.1 costs only $1.20 per month. This is literally 20 times cheaper, maybe 22 times cheaper than Cloud 4.5 Opus, about 8 times cheaper than Cloud 4.5 Sonnet, 12 times cheaper than GPT 5.2, and about 10 times cheaper than Gemini 3 Pro, which is pretty amazing in all honesty. And you can have multiple providers for this model with quite good throughput. Not amazing, but quite good. So I find this super insane and super amazing. Like the pricing is so aggressive. You could use it for your API calls if you want to make your workflows cheaper. And let's see my actual prompts. So the first thing I created is an interactive Pokemon Pokedex. All right. So 
I asked the model to build an interactive Pokemon Pokedex with the first 50 Pokemon. So it began thinking. It worked really, really fast to give me the answer. It shows me the structure of the files, tested a lot of stuff, and also deployed the website. So let's open it up on a new tab, click retry, and the Pokemons are not like loading. That's at least what we see here. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to say to the model, hey, Pokemons failed to load. I'm really interested to understand how it said 50 Pokemon cards rendered while we have zero rendering. That's very, very interesting. So GLM 4.5 as 4.7 actually failed this. This is usually due to course, so they haven't accounted for some kind of setup that they do internally on their, you know, interface here. So I'm going to let the model work on this and move to the second query, which is creating a transformer teaching web page. So let me show you exactly what I asked. I wanted to create a page that teaches transformer models. So I asked it exactly that and it created that in a transformer guide HTML. So it created a single HTML for me to use. So we're going over to LiveWeave to see the transformer page. So this is the transformer page that was created. It looks really nice. White and dark mode is not working. Beautiful. Click to start learning. Doesn't work. View architecture doesn't work. Introduction to transformers. Okay, what I see here is I see a lot of information about transformers. This looks good. There's a lot of details. A lot of stuff here comparing transformer to RNNs. Really nice. Architecture overview. Okay, that's interesting. It's a little bit... You know, not very responsive, it seems like. There is a little bit of an issue with the design, in my opinion. But still, the information is really solid. Okay, let's see. There are a lot of stuff here, interactive, you know, animations, which are not working. So what I can say is that this model really creates nice UIs, very detailed information. This is the first time that I've seen a model go so much in depth to explain transformers. This is the most in-depth page I have ever seen in my life about transformer models. It gives us code, different modalities. I gotta say, it's not very good at making stuff interactive. That's an issue it has. Let me also see if these are cross-linked. They really are not, uh, probably because there is a different way of linking so that these things don't work on live with but it's fine. Nobody cares about that. It also points us to PyTorch. So the website looks good. In terms of information, in terms of depth, it looks quite amazing, in my opinion, in all honesty. So in terms of the transformer page, check. This is one of the best, most in-depth results I ever seen from a model. Let's check out again the interactive Pokemon Pokedex. So the web page is still not working, which is super interesting. It fails to fetch Pokemons, that's at least what it says. And supposedly this would work, but obviously still doesn't work at all. And the model was not able to fix it. So this is kind of uh, disappointing in my opinion. I expected at least to be able to create this very simple page with a very simple API call, but it failed. So that's disappointing. Let's check out the Flappy Bird game. Let's see if the Flappy Bird game is actually working. Hopefully it does, hopefully it does. So here is the Flappy Bird game. So the game, as always, is super hard to play. This is the exact same thing that is happening with any AI model, in all honesty. I really like the design. Also, the pipes look great. <laughs> it's impossible to play. Like, how hard, how hard is it for AI to create a fucking Flappy Bird game? Like, guys, I don't get it. I don't get why it's so hard, but okay. This is the Flappy Bird game. The UI looks very nice. The pipes look great. Gameplay is super bad. I'm going to ask it, make the game a lot easier to play. Like make the game easier to play, okay? Just make the game easier to play and I would be very, very happy. Okay, so while we work on the Flappy Bird game, I want to show you the game we created, which is essentially a GTA 5 style game. Like the model went very in depth to work on it. And yeah, this is GTA 5, guys or maybe GTA 6, all right, and okay, this is lagging quite a lot. All right, so the camera movement is here. Everything is inverted, the jump is working. I can, okay, I would say this doesn't look bad, in all honesty, like, I get it. I don't know why the controls are inverted, I really don't get it. 
But all right, let's see if we can find the vehicle to enter. But yeah, this is a, a GTA 5 game on the browser. I mean, all right, no issue with it. What is going on? I don't, I don't get it. Like there is a very strange camera movement. It's impossible for me to play anything. So camera is the mouse. You can sprint with shift. So okay. All right. This looks interesting. Like, I mean, it's a cute little game created with a single prompt very, very fast. So yeah, that, that looks nice. This is very interesting. And it's hosted on the browser, which is really, really nice. Like you can say, you can check the development results super fast and super easily. So let's check again the Flappy Bird game. Hopefully the model has worked and like improved the shit. So let's check out the game. So indeed it made the game a lot easier to play. Still I'm a noob and I cannot play. Oh, let me pass. How hard is it? How hard is it? Oh my God, I'm a noob. I'm a noob. Let me pass. Okay, so these are the games that it created. I would say it's very, very good for the 3JS game. This is something GLM would never complete. It's really nice for the Flappy Bird game. Not amazing, but I love the UI. It's lovable style quality, so it's top notch. I really like the Transformer teaching web page. The design was not perfect, but okay. I have a little bit of an issue with the Pokemon Pokedex which it was not able to fix the API request or the course error or whatever. Hopefully when you code locally, this will not be an issue. So in my opinion, for the cost this model is costing, which is half the price of GLM, 4.7, this is an amazing, amazing model.